Hey y'all, in today's video, I'm sharing eight farmhouse style tier trade decor items. They have a kitchen theme to them and they turned out super cute. And this video is also part of a collaboration. Y'all know I love connecting and collaborating with other creators and today's video is no exception. I am joining Aria with DIY with Aria, Loli with Loli D's Creations, and the guest host is Katie with Lady Red Crafting, and of course there's me. <laughs> I'm one of the co-hosts with Our Gray House. So um, I appreciate y'all stopping by my craft room today. So let's get crafting. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. Kicking off the video with a little decor piece set that I got from Target. I did not pay full price for that. I'm sure I got it on clearance, but on its own, it is really cute but it's not what I was looking for today. So I grabbed one of the pieces and I'm painting it with Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. And I'm col uh, coloring, I'm painting the outside of the frame, the frame, and then the inside of the sign. And it really only took about one coat. And then cut out a decal using my Cricut and I'm using Expressions Vinyl Paper Transfer Tape. I love paper transfer tape when you're working with painted services because it doesn't pull up the paint. And I reuse my transfer tape over and over until it just has like no sticky left. Anyway, remove the paper transfer tape and voila, you've got a cute little decor piece. This goes perfect on a tear tray or just in a little vignette in your kitchen. I had cut out several cutting board shapes out of some wood that I had in my garage. And I decided I'm gonna try this technique where you take a wax candle and you rub it on the surface that you're gonna paint and then you paint it and then you scrape away some of the um, wax and then it kind of reveals, it makes it look rusted, makes it look, uh, not rusted, rustic, and makes it look, you know, aged. Well, I started to paint mine brown and then I was gonna layer several colors on and you just paint it like normal and then you go back when it's dry and you scrape away some of the paint. I did several layers y'all and then I put it on a little rub on transfer and I absolutely did not like how it turned out. In my mind it was going to come through with this like really cool vintage color and it did not. So I wasn't happy with it. So we're going to redo it for this video. Give it a good coat of Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and it really it took kind of like a coat and a half because in some spots I had to go over it again and in some spots it covered it fine the first time. Then I was trying to find a little something, something to go on. I thought maybe I'll use these windmills and put like farm or something up there. And, you know, I looked on the back and I thought, oh, well, it's got that little um, pig thing right there in the upper left corner. That would work. So I cut that out and um, cut all the way around it. And I decided before I was going to apply it to the cutting board, I needed to kind of distress up the cutting board just a little bit. So I took some Waverly chalk paint in the color truffle and distressed it with my chippy brush. Y'all, I know I've been into the chippy brush thing lately, but there was a couple spots that I felt were a little too heavy. And so I took some Waverly chalk paint in the color snow white. I just got the bottle and I was just going to lighten it up a little bit. You know, I, I like it. I've been really liking things that look kind of old, vintage, you know, that kind of thing. So taking some Mod Podge and a sponge brush and I'm applying it to the front of the cutting board because we're going to do that heat activated, reactivated thing again. So I'm taking the little piece that I cut out and I'm putting it where I want it, putting some parchment paper and taking my little heat press and kind of go around. It's like a little mini iron. So you could probably use a household iron too, I'm sure. But you just go around and y'all, it reactivates that Mod Podge and adheres that little um, thing that I cut out to the cutting board. It works like a charm, no bubbles or anything. So to add a little bit more flair to it, I'm just gonna apply a little dot of hot glue and then I'm gonna wrap this jute twine around several times. And this is how it turned out. I think this looks really, really super cute. I, I really love it. And I think it's gonna look cute on my tear tray. Hey y'all, if you love crafting and you want to connect with some more creative people, you need to join my Facebook group called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. I host that group with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY, and I'm going to have a link to that in the description box below. So I get my inspiration from a lot of different places and I found this photo online 
I'm sure somebody was selling a lot or somewhere. And I thought, you know, I've got these square dowels in my stash. Let me just kind of copy what's going on. Now, you know, it's not an original idea, but you see ladders all the time. And I thought it just would look cute on a tear tray. So I'm going to make one with the square dowel. I got mine from Elliot's, which is, which is just like a local hardware store, hardware store, hardware store. And I'm sure you could get them at Home Depot and Lowe's. I just didn't check there because I know they carry them at Elliot's. So I'm measuring out also approximately how long the rungs need to be. And you can use a miter saw, just like a regular handheld one, to cut all of this down. And it really cuts down pretty quickly. Or you could use a, um, a power miter saw thing, which is what I did. Take it back. I did cut these, I think, by hand. Maybe I didn't. I don't remember. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. But I'm measuring them so I can share with you guys the measurements. And the sides of the ladder are six and a half inches, I think. And then the little rungs are two inches each. And wrote them down so I wouldn't forget. Yep, there we go. Now, I'm trying to figure out, based on the picture, where to place these rungs of the ladder. And then I'm just putting little dots of glue on the front there of each side of the long pieces. So that way I can just flip those in like that and then put it together. Instead of trying to have to figure out where to put the glue or anything like that, I thought that was just an easier way to do it. And then, does it turn out perfect? No, it doesn't. But it's okay. It's rustic, right? It's rustic. It's primitive looking. So, I didn't have a clamp that I could use that would keep it all together. So, I just took some rubber bands and put those around and let them dry until they were, you know, dry enough that they held together without too much movement. And I took some Waverly chalk paint. I think it's in the color celery. It's either celery or moss. And I am giving it a rough coat with a chippy brush and I mean it was working out fine but I felt like I wanted it darker so I took some Waverly chalk paint in the color truffle and I'm just going through and repainting it all and I, I'm, I'm trying to give it a reasonable coat but if any of the other color peeks through I'm okay with that too now before I show you how that turned out I took a piece of twine and I wrapped some um, masking tape around it to form like a little point like that and then I'm taking some 10 millimeter size beads because I'm gonna make a little mini beaded garland and I'm just stringing those on and yes I did drop them once in the craft room so I had to pick them all up but anyway it is what it is I did put a tassel on one end but I wrapped the jute twine around my hand about five times and then I used the end of that twine piece you see me there and tying a knot and I used glue to kind of hold it all, uh, hot glue, to kind of hold it all together and in place. And I pushed one of those beads down on the top of the knot so that it doesn't move or anything like that. And then you've got to put a piece of twine around the top to make the head of the tassel. Oh, I'm just adding extra glue. <laughs> and so I do that. And again, I use hot glue to kind of secure stuff and keep it all together because it tends to, I don't know, mine tend to unravel. <laughs> Maybe I don't do them right, who knows? And all you have to do to make the tassel is cut those loops open and then trim it up to the desired length that you want. And that's it. It's really very simple and easy to make. And this is how they look together. And that little ladder is kind of standing on its own. I mean, I'm sure that little beaded garland is helping it, but you could paint those beads any color you want to match your decor. You could paint the ladder any color you want to match your decor. In fact, I almost painted it black, but I've got a lot of things that are already painted black in this video, so I thought let's let's warm it up with some brown. Anyway, I love how it turned out. Now, a long time ago, a client of mine was getting rid of this vintage spice rack, and it came with all of the spice bottles. I used the spice rack to hold some of my paints, like the metallic paints and things like that, the ones I don't use as often, and I've used the spice bottles in a lot of different videos. So I'm just taking my heat gun to loosen up the label that's on the front because we don't want the label on the front. You know, you know, I gotta take off all the stickers and stuff like that. I just like a cleaner look. And then I take some rubbing alcohol. I got that little pumper thing from Dollar Tree and I'm just wiping off the surface because I'm gonna be painting it and I wanna make sure that everything adheres to it, um, adheres to it well. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do. 
I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And this is like the bottom of the barrel on the white chalk paint there. That's why I had to get that new Waverly chalk paint in the color Snow White because I was out of white and I needed it. Anyway, I'm giving it a coat of paint all the way around. And I don't like that. You can really see the brush strokes. I just, I wasn't as happy with the, the paint job. And you'll see, I'll do something different in a second. In the meantime, while that's sitting to the side there, I am looking for some pieces, scrap pieces of wood because I need to make a little mini crate. And yes, I could probably bought one somewhere or whatever, but I wanted to make one. And so I am just taking out some square dowels that I had. I'm taking out some paint sticks that I had and just searching for the right pieces to fit this project. And I'm measuring, or at least trying to, to kind of see how everything is gonna fit. Is it gonna be too crowded and all that kind of stuff? Because I want the crate snug enough around the bottle that it doesn't like move around too much, but I don't want it like having to force it in or anything like that. So anyways, I am gonna glue two little paint sticks together. Am I gonna show you that? I think I do. You know, when you watch back the video, <laughs> what, how it's gonna see, I'm trying to see how the slats are gonna look for the crate. And so I take some parchment paper because I don't want this to really stick to anything else. And I take some wood glue that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm just putting a thin, thin line of glue there and then putting them together. And then I'm trying to figure out how long the slats need to be. And these are just ones that I painted for another project and didn't use or had extra. I don't know. That's why I always keep my scraps because you never know. They can come in handy. Maybe I'm just a craft supply collector. <laughs> Could be a little bit of both. But I am putting them together and then I'm going to put tape around it because for this particular one, I am going to use that um, circular saw that I have to cut those down. You, you totally can do this with a handheld miter saw. It's not a circular saw. Is it a circular saw? I don't know what it's called. Anyway, one of the saws that I have out in my garage, I was going to cut it with that. But <laughs> I, I cut it down to size and then I'm trying to figure out how to glue it on and at the same time and like hold it together and what will I use for clamps and that kind of stuff. So what I decide to do is I'm going to glue one side on. Yeah, see me thinking about it. I'm going to glue this one side on. Okay, and then I glue the other side on and that's the bottom uh, slat. And so then I take one of the side pieces, side piece, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I take one of the side pieces and I glue that on to kind of form one side. And then whoop, we're just going to stare. I was like, what are we doing here? Okay, there we go putting that on and I'm going to kind of flip it on its side and I'm going to glue the slat. See, um, so I'm the reason I'm kind of going from side to side is because I'm trying to make sure I don't have too much glue on there and I'm gluing the slats on ahead of time. And then, man, I've got this going <laughs> Here she does it in slow motion. I even sped this up and it feels like it's in slow motion. I'm putting the other side back on there. Then I'm going to put a can of or container of paint on top to like weigh it down. But I'm, I was trying to make sure it was straight and it wasn't. <laughs> That's okay. So I am taking again, some Waverly chalk paint and see if there's celery or moss, but again, use the color that makes you happy and fits your decor and I'm painting the sides and then I'm going to give a rough coat to the front because I do want some of that brown to show through from the, um, they were stained with antique wax. We really wax in the color antique. <laughs> so <laughs> my favorite thought I was going to get through a video without saying it, but there we are. And so now I am going back in with a sponge dauber that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm taking that snow white paint and I'm just dabbing all around. And I like the finish of that much better than the using the paintbrush. So that's what I would do next time. And that's what I'd recommend you do if you replicate this particular deal. And I went back to that Dollar Tree calendar and I noticed it had that little cow on there. And I thought, oh, this would be perfect. I was going to try to cut out a cow with my Cricut. I was going to try to stencil something on, but I thought, no, why make it harder? Like work smarter. And Dollar Tree's calendar had something perfect for it. So I was like, it's going to fit. It's going to fit great. It's going to be awesome. But because of the color of that little calendar piece, 
I took some Waverly chalk paint in the color. I don't know. Let me look. It's in the color hazelnut, which I do like hazelnuts too. Anyway, I'd kind of distressed it just a little bit so it would kind of blend in together, maybe match a little bit better. I don't know. And I'm figuring out where I want it to go. And I'm taking some Mod Podge because guess what, guys? Guess what I'm going to do with it? <gasps> Hello, Neo. After it dried, I laid it down and I put that decal on. I put some parchment paper on. Made sure I had it in the right spot, though. Put some parchment paper on and I took that heat press and I ironed it on. And of course, my fingers are really close. I mean, I didn't burn myself or anything like that, but if you do it, just be careful because it does get hot. But I just ironed that little thing on and it worked like a charm, just like the other ones do. It, it works so well, y'all. I, I am absolutely sold on decoupaging this way because it is so easy. This is how the two pieces turned out. Now I did add milk, five cents. I just wrote that on with a Sharpie pen, but look at these two together, so cute. And then putting the milk container, milk jug inside. I just, <laughs> I just think it looks so cute and I can't wait to put it on my tear tray. We're getting near the end y'all. I think that was this DIY number seven. And I had this mini rolling pin pretty sure I got it from Hobby Lobby and I had stained it with my really wax in the color antique on it. If you're listening, I had to tell it, I had to say it again because people want to know sometimes. Anyways, my daughter Anna, I think it was Anna had said, I keep saying Waverly really wax in the color antique, like over and over, but I mean, it's true. I use it a lot. Anyways, I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and I'm just painting the center of the rolling pin. This one's so stinking easy. I don't even know. It's more like a hack or something. Hack. The word hack just sounds like hey, like you're, you know, coughing up a loogie or something. Anyway, sorry about that, y'all. But I used my paper transfer tape and I printed out the word thankful. And now I'm just going to apply it to the rolling pin. And I kind of felt like the word thankful, I made it too big. But, you know, in the end, I mean, I think it turns out fine. Because look how adorable this is. Thankful. And I did add buffalo check around the rolling pin and then a little buffalo check bow. Super cute y'all. Last one. Thanks for hanging in there with me y'all. So guess what? I got my chippy brush and my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and I am distressing this. I'm actually really painting it. It's a heavy dry brush, pretty much painting it, but also like not caring if I leave a few spots unpainted. And this is just an extra piece of wood that I had from when I had my fence done and I had them save all the extra wood and leave it at my house. And I've been using it ever since. And that was a long time ago. But another thing, like if you want free wood, you can like when you're driving through your neighborhood, look and see if anybody's doing any remodeling or anything like that. Um, now don't steal nothing. Don't, don't be like that. But you can also go to Lowe's and even Home Depot sometimes and, and see where they cut the wood to, you know, some people ha have cuts to the wood made before they leave. Sometimes they have extras and they sell them either super cheap or they're willing to give some of them away. But I mean, don't, don't say Lisa said you was going to give it for free. Cause that's not what I'm saying. But <laughs> You could ask them, but they, I usually get the wood there like 70% off. So not a bad deal. Then I made another decal. I was going to stencil this on, but I just decided to make it a decal. And that's the Expression vinyl, Expressions vinyl tape, paper transfer tape in the six inch size. They don't make it like that anymore. I think you, I'm going to have to get it off Amazon when I need it again. But anyway, I have, I'm just burnishing it down to the paper transfer tape and peeling back slowly to make sure that everything sticks down like it's supposed to. And then I'm going to position it on there, trying to make sure it's straight. So I went and got my um, cutting mat again and thinking that was going to help me. It really didn't, y'all, because I just measure with my heart and I hope for the best. That's, that's the way I do things. And so I'm just burnishing it down and then slowly peeling back. And I will save that paper transfer tape. But look, isn't this cute? Now, if you notice, if you didn't notice, then just never mind. But if you did notice, bonus points for you, if you notice that the dot over the eye is missing, I just looked at it and I thought, huh, that's missing the dot over the eye. But five stars would eat here again, super cute, and goes right along with that kitchen themed tear tray that I'm doing. Here's another look at my projects from today. And 
I'm going to have a link to the host channel in the description box below as well as to the playlist. There's going to be a lot of fun content on there, you guys, and I don't want you to miss it. Thank you again to Aria from DIY with Aria, Loli from Loli V's Creations, and the guest host Katie from Lady Red Crafting for having me join y'all today. I had a ton of fun and um, I hope y'all enjoyed my video as well. Thank y'all so much for joining me in my craft space today. I really do appreciate the company while I craft and create, and I hope you enjoyed what I made today. You can let me know which one was your favorite in the comments below. And don't forget, if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on TikTok, if it's still around, or Instagram or Facebook, my handle is Our Great House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye!